What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 13.3.1 beta 3 about a week after the release of beta 2. So of course in this video we're going to be going through the software and finding what's new if anything at all. We're going to talk about the bugs, the bug fixes, the performance, battery life and more. So if we go ahead and take a look at the size of this update you can see it's a very small update. Mine came in at 136.3 megabytes here on my iPhone 11 Pro. Of course that size will vary depending on your device and the firmware you're coming from. Now as for the build, let's go ahead to settings, general, about. And you can see there the build number is 17D5050A. So once again, another A at the end of the build, same as beta two, but the fact that we got back-to-back -back A builds indicates that this is very likely the GM build and that we should be seeing the final version of 13.3.1 next week. But we'll talk more about that at the end of this video. But if we go down to the modem firmware update, you can see that we did get a minor update there. It went from 1.04.05 to 1.04.06. So very small modem firmware update but it is an update nonetheless for the iPhone 11 series. Of course, that number will be a little bit different depending on your generation of iPhones, but it should be updated for every device. So now let's talk about the changes, the bug fixes, the remaining bugs, all that good stuff. So if you guys missed my follow-up video in beta two a few days ago, there was actually a new feature remotely added by Apple that I found and posted on Twitter. And that is inside of settings. If we go to our settings and go to privacy down here and then to location services and then down to system services, and then we go down, you can see there is a new toggle right there called networking and wireless. And if you go ahead and try to disable that, you can see you get this prompt right here. And basically it's telling you that it disables all location tracking assets for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and anything related to the ultra wideband inside of the iPhone 11s. Now, of course, this is only for the iPhone 11 series because they're the only ones with the U1 chip for that ultra wideband technology. And like I mentioned in my last video, this was never a bug. The whole reason that Apple added this, it was never because it was a bug. It was actually doing exactly what it was supposed to do. Apple just wasn't super transparent about this. You know, when the U1 chip came to market and you know, they didn't do a good job of explaining it. So people were wondering why the location bar was still up top, even with location services disabled. And basically it's because of the U1 chip, you know, using GPS to make sure it wasn't, uh, you know, in another area, basically. It's a whole nother story. I talked about it in previous videos, but basically it was never a huge deal but the media kind of made it a big deal and a lot of people took it out of context. But basically, if you disable this, it's not like you're still gonna be missing features. Like if you go ahead and try to airdrop something, if we go to airdrop right here, you can see you could still point your iPhone 11, you know, in certain areas, even with that toggle disabled, you're still able to do things like that. It's just going to disable the location tracking basically for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and things like that. Now, that was never, you were never really being tracked. It was never being sent anywhere. Your location data was never being sent anywhere or sold or anything like that. So once again, it was a huge kind of misunderstanding for a lot of people that don't understand, you know, the technical side of it and the backstory of it. But nonetheless, you do have a toggle there to disable that. Now, if you are super, super cautious about, you know, privacy and things like that, you can go ahead and disable that. I don't see it as a huge deal though. So I'm going to keep mine enabled just so that everything performs as expected on my iPhone 11. Now, another thing that I can confirm has been fixed in beta two was the speakerphone echo issue. So I had this, you know, obviously in beta one, everybody had it with beta one. It was a major issue. And with beta two, it was supposedly fixed, but I couldn't tell yet in the video I made for beta two because I hadn't been using the phone long enough on beta two to tell. But after using it, you know, pretty much every single day, and you know, using speakerphone pretty much every single day, I can tell you that it has been 100% fixed. I haven't had it one time in the past week of using beta two. Now, one thing that hasn't been fixed is the screen time communication limits bypass. So for some reason, you know, this was again, one of the flagship features of iOS 13.3 and it was flawed because you could bypass it. So if you go into screen time here and go to communication limits and turn it on to contacts only, if you go into your text messages and you go into a phone number that's basically not a contact, you could still add that person as a contact and text them, essentially bypassing the whole point of having, you know, communication limits turned on. So I think Apple needs to either remove the add contact button or when you press it, it should make it so that you have to enter the passcode to be able to add that new contact because then you could just go ahead and communicate with them, you know, easily. Now, a new bug that started with beta two for me is notifications on my Apple watch are very delayed. And I mean like 10 second delays on the notifications to my Apple watch. So for some reason it's super delayed. I did not update my watch. I didn't change any settings at all. 
So I will be testing to see if that delay gets fixed here with beta three, but that was something that I noticed with beta two was the delay and notifications to my Apple Watch. Now, as for the Instagram and YouTube sound bug, that is still present in beta two, unfortunately. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I've talked about it in pretty much every single iOS 13.3 and 13.3.1 video, but basically it would go into Instagram and sometimes in YouTube, but mostly Instagram, you would play a video, then you would go out of the application and maybe into another application or you know you would lock your phone you would just go back to the home screen and you would continue hearing that video still playing and it got super super annoying sometimes it would be helpful if it was like youtube but sometimes that audio would be playing over another video so you'd essentially have two youtube videos playing at the same time super super annoying and it, it did still happen in beta 2 so i will be testing it here on beta 3 to see if it has been fixed but of course my hopes aren't too high i think we're gonna have to wait till at least the final version or maybe even 13.4 to see a fix for that and you know a long time for a long time i thought it was actually an issue with the applications themselves but after they both have received numerous updates i don't think that's the case now also with beta 2 we did still have the text message notification bug where i basically would just not get my notifications for text messages on my lock screen my phone wouldn't light up or anything but i did have people in the comment section of my last video saying that they had that issue until they completely disabled imessage re-enabled it and then rebooted their device now i tried that and i still had the issue so I don't know if you guys have a fix for that or if you're still having that let me know in the comment section below now as for connectivity i believe this was another one of the major reasons for ios 13.3.1 to be released in the first place since users on the o2 network have had some pretty major cell connectivity issues especially those with the iphone 10r on that o2 network now i did test cell connectivity on my 10r right over here for basically the past two weeks you know i've been using it on and off and I didn't have any issues on beta one, beta two, anything, nothing abnormal at all as far as cell connectivity goes. But then again, I am on Verizon and this is supposedly, you know, just for O2 users and not just the iPhone 10R. So if you do have O2 and you have an iPhone 10R, let me know if you're having connectivity issues or if they're fixed or whatever the case may be, because apparently that's a very major issue. And unfortunately I cannot test that, but I can say that it's not an issue with the iPhone 10R. I do know that that was a scare at the beginning because I did mention that it was on the 10R, but I can confirm that it's not an issue with the 10R. It's actually the network. Now, another thing I wanted to address is Apple Music. So for some reason with Apple Music, it would just be really slow to play music sometimes. Like I would click play on the music down here. Or I would pick a song from my library and, you know, just start playing the music and it would just not play for a good like minute to a minute and a half. So it would say that it's playing. Let me see if I can do it right now. Okay. So it plays right away here, but basically it would just take a long time to play and it wouldn't show the music's actually moving, so it just wouldn't play at all. It wouldn't show like it was moving and I couldn't hear anything. It just wouldn't start playing. It would just stay on zero, zero after I press play. And you know, it would say pause like it was actually playing, but nothing was playing. And I know it's not a connectivity issue because I've tried it on multiple occasions on LTE, on Wi-Fi. And I noticed that it would just happen pretty much after like a day without using music. Like if I went to sleep and then woke up the next day, after you know not using music for a while it would just be very slow to play the music again so i'm not sure what's going on if that's a beta issue if that's an issue on the final version of 13.3 as well let me know if you guys are having that issue as well in the comments now another issue it's not really an issue but another thing i noticed from somebody who actually left a comment on one of my videos is that when you go into settings and search for something like mono audio when you click on mono audio it should take you right to that settings page right but if you tap on that you can see right here you still are in the accessibility menu when you click on that and you kind of have to search around for a lot of things and figure out you know where the mono audio is now i know where it's at but a lot of people will be like man there's a lot of things here i don't know really where to go so apple should really fix when you search something for it to take you right to that actual settings page now as far as the performance and the battery life i would expect this to be exactly the same as beta 2 and actually the geekbench scores between beta 3 and beta 2 were exactly the same in the multi-core and the single core so would not expect any kind of difference going from beta 2 to beta 3. Now, as far as going from 13.3 to 13.3.1, you might see a minor difference in performance and probably not in battery life. Battery life is probably going to be exactly the same. But as far as performance, you may see a minor bump, but really nothing major at all. Nothing that 99% of people will notice. That is unless you were having some major bugs on 13.3, but I don't think a lot of people really had major bugs on 13.3 as far as performance or battery life goes so yeah that's pretty much everything with 13.3.1 beta 3 really just some minor fixes as far as security enhancements and things like that nothing forward facing nothing you know that we can see visually that has changed in this beta now as for the final release we could probably expect that next week the week of the 27th i would have to guess the 28th or the 29th would be when we see 
13.3.1 released to the public. Now it could also be the 30th. Apple has released things on Thursdays before, but most of the time the final releases are on Tuesdays. So I would expect the 28th, especially with iOS 13, a lot of the final releases have been on Tuesday. So the 28th or the 29th are a good bet, but anytime next week, we should see the final version of 13.3.1 and that would be perfect because it would be the end of January and then we would see the 13.4 beta start probably on February 3rd if we do get the final version of 13.3.1 or we could even see 13.4 beta 1 the day after 13.3.1 releases so I will let you guys know of course you know to follow me on Twitter as well for all that information I will bring that to you first there on Twitter but yeah guys that's pretty much it here for 13.3.1 beta 3 let me know what you think about this update down in the comment section below do you have any issues any new features any changes anything that you've noticed anything at all let me know down in those comments below and if you guys enjoyed this video I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and of course subscribe so you don't miss when the final version of 13.3.1 gets released and of course the 13.4 beta is coming shortly after but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon